I recently did a Zuck run in very basic necromancy gear to show how the style could be used to get your first Zuck cape. This video we're going to deep dive into that run, go through the setup I used, as well as some tips and tricks for the run, and show how I dealt with each of the challenges. First, let's cover our gear. I'm using the necromancy power armor, but if you want to use the tank gear instead, that will work perfectly fine. For the cape, neck, quiver and pocket slots, just use the best options you have available. For books, you can use armadillo or wen for AoE, and Ceradomin or Jazz for single target. The ring is the Tokul Zo. Make sure it's got over 2000 charges to last the entire encounter. It doesn't work on Zuck himself, but it works on everything else. And the last thing to mention about the gear is the boots. I've opted to use obsidian boots here. On their own, they offer a 5% damage reduction against mobs in the waves, but by going to the Fight Cauldron and donating Tokul, you can increase this to 15% for 20 minutes per 15k Tokul. For the inventory, it's simply the best buff potion you have, a weapon poison for the waves, bone bombs if you have them for Zuck and Harakan, and an adrenaline potion for if you ever need adrenaline in a pinch. We also have three non-consumables in the form of the Enhanced Excalibur, Ancient Elven Ritual Shard, and a Shield. The Excalibur and Crystal offer health and prayer regen respectively every five minutes, and the Shield might seem confusing at first given Necromancy's reliance on its Lantern and the existence of Bone Shield, but that's there because it carries a perk called Turtling 4, which extends the duration of Barricade. This will be used for one of the challenges. You don't need to succeed at the challenges for the cape, but if you have a tier 70 or higher shield with this perk, then the third challenge is a breeze. Otherwise, just stock up on runes, restores, and brews. I'm bringing a yak because there's nothing more comforting than having a whole extra inventory of brews available. If you're more confident, a DPS familiar like a Blood Reaver is also a good option. As for relics, I ran Conservation of Energy, Persistent Rage and Pouch Protector for this run. I actually forgot to set my relics before starting, but the options would have been Persistent Rage, Fury of the Small, and Death Ward. But the only particularly important one if you have it is Persistent Rage, because this allows you to build up to summoning your conjures while outside of combat. Now we're all prepared and we've started the encounter, it's time to talk about safe spots. I like this safe spot down in the southeast corner because the wall has varying heights so you can use it to attack over to melee mobs without going out of your safe spot as well as use it to block mages and rangers. The other well known safe spot is up in the northwest corner and is covered in the wiki's guide. So I'll link to that guide in the description for their example of utilizing that safe spot. Regardless of the safe spot you plan to use you should be aware of the geysers placed behind all of them. These erupt every so often and hit for a bunch of magic damage, so if possible just step off of the geyser when that happens. I'm also using the incantation called Darkness, which is essentially Necromancy's version of Animate Dead. And no, you can't use both of them at the same time. It just gives you a 20% dodge chance, which over a long fight will add up to a lot of missed hits. The Necromancy tank armor has a passive effect that works similarly. To get the most out of this safe spot, I recommend doing the following. First, let mobs come to you. You don't want to be chasing mobs around the arena unless there's one or two left. Secondly, deal with mobs on your side of the wall first before dealing with mobs on the other side. It can be tempting to see a big bundle of mobs pop up on the other side and go and AoE them, however just wait because mobs spawn in a staggered fashion during the waves. And finally, what to do with your prayers. If you're not getting hit by anything, use soul split, otherwise pray against whatever's hitting you. If multiple styles are attacking you, then pray against the style that has most enemies and kill the mobs of the other style first. Following these guidelines will get you through basically all of the waves, it even works for the Jad waves. But there are a few mobs to cover what their special abilities are. These are the little birds, the big rangers, and the really big mages. First up is the little birds, their auto attacks drain adrenaline so don't let them get into melee range, and they also sometimes throw a projectile at you which can go over safe spots. It's notified by a little text above their head, which will also drain your prayer if it hits you. It also does typeless damage, but that's less important than prayer. Next up is the big boy rangers. These guys get a damage buff when they stand still that goes away when they move, so if you step out of your safe spot, make sure to cause them to move as well so that you don't get clobbered. And finally, the big mages with four legs. These guys apply a burn with their auto attacks, so if you have any stacks of this, just freedom them away. So, with the regular waves covered, let's dive into the special waves, starting off with wave 4, which is the first igneous wave. 
three igneous melee mobs spawn which must be stunned in order to be damaged otherwise they will just rapidly heal for necromancy your stun of choice is soul strike which also does a nice bit of aoe to mop up the rest of the little melee guys so just make sure you always open with soul strike on one of the igneous mobs and then just kill them normally they don't have much health this wave doesn't hit very hard very chill just make sure you've got souls and what you should do at the end of every igneous wave is you should build up to 100 percent adrenaline Go into living death and then build up as much adrenaline as you can before pressing your extra action button to end the phase because that will begin the Zuck burn. Ideally you want to be going into these burns with 12 necrosis stacks, 3 residual souls and as much adrenaline as possible. But as soon as you hit the extra action button it clears all of the rest of the mobs and Zuck becomes attackable for a short time and you need to deal 50k damage. To get a flawless run you have to do this in one attempt but that's not required to get the cape. For the first Zuck burn I mostly just do it with Finger of Death because I want to save the weapon spec and Volley of Souls for the first challenge which we'll go into now. Wave 5 is the first challenge wave and requires you to meet a DPS check against 5 spread out enemies. Fortunately Threads of Fate makes this completely trivial so you hit that and you weapon spec one side of the room and then Volley of Souls the other side. And then just mop up anything that survived. On the note of Threads of Fate, this incantation is incredibly strong and will cause your next two single target abilities to hit five targets instead. So you want to be using this thing every minute and the best abilities to use with it are Volley of Souls and Weapon Spec. Specifically the tier 70 to 90 special attack. It will just clean waves of mobs for you. The next set of special waves start with wave 9 with the Igneous Ranger wave. These guys, similar to the igneous melee mobs, need to be hit with a special type of ability before they can be damaged. In this case, it's a threshold ability, however, necromancy does not have standard thresholds, so instead we rely on spectral scythe, finger of death, as well as debilitate. All three of these will work for this wave, so I recommend using one per mob. Again, once you've hit them with that threshold, you can just DPS them normally, and then move on to the zuck burn again. For what we're saving from this burn, once again it's the weapon spec and also I'm going to hold on to a finger of death cast. That's because the next challenge is a mob we have to kill who cannot be damaged by smaller hits. So stuff like volley of souls isn't particularly useful so we're going to use that on Zuck instead. That's the great thing about the necromancy kit, you have so many different resources and so many different damage sources that you can just pick and choose which ones you want to use where. As we alluded to, we go into the challenge wave, we get our guy to kill, and we hit him with a weapon spec into a finger of death. And if you're using tank armor, or you just got unlucky with your proc, you'll have to manually cast invoke death to execute the rest of it. Or if you have the spare adren, just throw another finger. The last of the igneous waves is wave 14, which introduces the igneous mages. These guys have a shield that decays when you stand within it, so you want to run near them and then DPS once the shield's disappeared. That's basically all there is to this wave, so once again we're just going to kill the three igneous mobs, head over to Zuck, build up for a living death, and go to town. As for what we're going to be using on Zuck this time, we just need to end this with 100% adrenaline, which Necromonty is especially suited to because we have residual souls and necrosis stacks which allow us to output a fair amount of damage without spending any adrenaline, so we're just going to do that. Once Zuck is down we go into the third and final challenge, and this is why we brought our shield. We're going to swap to our shield and use Barricade. If you don't have Turtling 4 or you don't have 100% Adrenaline, you can Resonance the first hit and then Barricade before the second hit hits. And as soon as we've survived this, it's on to the Jad Wave. So for the triple Jad Wave, we're just going to treat it the same as we treat any other normal wave. We're going to start off in the southeast corner, just take on the one Jad that comes over to us. Then we're going to slowly move around the room fighting the Jads one at a time. The only unique thing we're going to be doing in this wave is before we engage the third Jed, we're going to drop combat and summon all of our conjures as well as command our ghost. We want these ready to go for Harakan, so let's just get them done out of the way now. And for Harakan, we're not really going to do anything fancy. We've just got our conjures ready to go. We're going to hop into living death and hit it with as many fingers of death as we can. The only mechanic to really be aware of here is that when a pool erupts next to Harakan, you have to step to the side because there's about to be a bombardment on you that will drain your adrenaline. But for the most part, your conjures will make short work of him. Just remember to hit finger of death as many times as you can. As for why we're using living death on Harakan instead of Zuck, you actually can't skip pizza phase with Zuck, so you don't need living death before the first pizza phase. And now it's time to prepare for Zuck, so we're going to build on the tentacles and resummon any conjures that have disappeared. And then once the tentacles despawn, you can head on over to Zuck and build on him to continue doing the same. 
we're basically looking to command our ghost before we really start fighting Zerg. And then once he jumps down, he just goes into his auto attacks and mechanics. He will do that if you are too far away, so make sure you're near the middle of the room. This kind of messes with his mechanic order from my understanding, so we actually get the move debuff first that reduces your health, so you just want to surge when you get that. Next up is going to be the overhead slam, so we're going to wait for that. And when his sword hits the ground is when you surge. That will remove all of these stacks, so you want to pop a super restore just to restore your health at this point. And we're just going to continue DPSing. There's a resonance incoming when he does the fist pump. I miss it. And then the next thing to worry about is pizza time. So going into pizza time, we're going to be dealing with three igneous mobs. First up is an igneous melee guy, so I've got a soul ready to stun. Stun and just throw a little DPS in. Make sure we've got a threshold available for the ranger that's coming up next. Don't really need to rush these guys. Necromancy has plenty of damage to take them out. Then we'll go over to the ranger, hit it with a threshold, and get this one down quickly because it is a bit harder to kite compared to the melee guy. And then finally, it's a major. This one, as I said before, is one of the easiest. You just get close to it and the shield disappears. And then once all three of these are down, we get the ability to stun Zuck again. So that will appear as an extra action button now. So we're going to build on Zuck for a little bit, go into Living Death. And now the goal is to kill Zuck before we get another pizza phase. His mechanic order is going to reset at 100k health, so we get basically two rounds of his abilities to do 250k damage. So there was his first spec where the attack applies a bleed, and you just want to freedom that off. And we go into the health reduction again, so we're just going to surge to remove 10 stacks of that. Wait for the overhead swing, which doesn't come because we go below 100k health, so we get the bleed again. We're just going to wait for freedom to come back up and use freedom on that. That does mean we're going to be getting another 15 stacks of the health reduction debuff. So we'll surge again to remove that by 10. And next up would be the overhead swing, but I believe we're about to execute and there we go. That is Zuck down. All you need to do is Freedom, Surge, Surge again, Resonance, and Pizza Time. And you get your Igneous Stone. I hope you found this example run and talk through of the Zuck encounter helpful. If you have any other questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments, so just hit me up down below. And as always, I'm going to wish you a wonderful week, and I'll see you again on Sunday for the resuming of Path of the Titans. So I'll catch you again next time.